desk because they can break that game down. Thank you very much, guys. Get that oxygen tank, D-Man. You are going to need it for the rest of the series. So much action happened that we've queued up four replays. We're going to be running through them. Let's pull the first replay up on your screen. Let you know that Royal Club won that game with the largest gold deficit at Worlds. Previous record was 5k. They won the game with 9k. Let's go back to level one. It started dramatically, Monte Cristo. Okay, so this is uh, prompted by that Fiddlesticks pick. You want to invade that blue buff just so that you can stop him and slow his jungle down as much as possible or force him not to get drained at level one so that he, he gets slower anyway. Now, that, that ends up happening, but not in the way they intended. So when you walk in blind like this, let's go ahead and run this clip. Twisted Fate doesn't have a card queued. Now, Starhorn will always be able to get there. They're also lined up for a five-man tornado. So they're in improper formation, and you need to check that brush with a hook, or at least, at the very least, to have a gold card or a red card picked before you face check it. So after that, it's just that crowd control was just executed really poorly. Yeah, and honestly, even if you do force a Fiddlesticks to learn Dark Wind at level one, it was a lane swap. He duoed his blue buff with Maokai, and it's like, oh no, I dealt the same damage I would have otherwise. Well, let's pull up the second replay, and Krepo, I want you to talk me through the 2v2, because this game was really defined by the engagements between the teams. Yeah, definitely not the strategy is what separated these teams from each other, because <laughs> there were a lot of strategic mismatches, <laughs> but their fights were good, though, and entertaining. So if you roll the clip, there's just a couple of things I wanted to highlight here. I just like Cloud Strash. He played really well. He gets that hook on Uzi, procs his hook immediately so he doesn't get uh, cancelled by Tornado. Tornado doesn't cancel him. I think the play should have went the other way. And then Sang gets exhausted, disengages here, and this is so unlucky. Cloud flashes forward and he wants Sun to click that lantern, but Sun barely gets it, but still. Then again, Uzi comes in again, overextends, and this game is just going constantly back and forth, and there's just so much on the spot, on the fly thinking, and I was just very impressed by Cloud's stretch. Yeah, after the 2v2, it didn't end there because everybody else wanted to get involved in the party. Freak, chime in about what some of the decisions being made here. I love how Insect gets to force it because he knows there's no way around this. Cloud has a good play, but he walks past a ward, just ults over the wall, knows he's got enough. And Insect, by the way, as does three points drain is his main build. This is just a good sort of defense. I want to talk about the fiddle though. Um, three points drain, and then he maxes his fear after this. This is rank two fear, buys him enough time. Even the bouncing silence is good. Go go and get silenced again at the end of all those bounces, which delays his javelin that would have lasted Insect even still. So Insect manages to keep so himself close. alive, escapes <laughs> by the skin of his teeth. Yeah. We have another replay. By the way, this third replay happened at 11 minutes into the game. Let's pull this one up onto your screen. Massive dragon fight. Crepo, this one's yours. Um, yeah, I actually don't even remember what... Oh, they get pinched. Yeah, yeah, we can roll the clip right here already. <laughs> this is why TF is good against Switch, because he went invisible, and we, we knew already what's going to happen. You get Kali from one side, Spears coming from the other side, and then Lovely, he doesn't want to go for the Q-Smite, because he knows he'll die. He'll just smite, get that. Then he walks up together with Cloud, and there's no way OMG can get touched. This is almost the best Oriana ulti you can hope for. Good ulti for Insect. He actually could have played backwards, just barely intact. Oh, he does. He, before he dies, he plays Insect out there. That's such a good... Yeah. He knows he has to go in, draw the abilities and let his team clean, uh, clean up, his stretch play was just on point. I think he could have canceled, like it was a risk, but yeah, I think he could have actually canceled Crowstorm instead of having the guaranteed push away from the team. I don't know, I'll take it, man, I'll take sure, it. Sure, sure, I mean, it did work out. I was just like, he walked in, I was like, he's trying to cancel, he's trying to cancel Crowstorm. But it's a he held slow it. animation. You do it backwards, right? Yeah, but even then, like, Sure, well, we, you don't want to be that course. guy. You don't want to be that guy get like free wheeled over you. <laughs> <laughs> right. We do have another replay. This ha this came after a slightly slower mid game. Uh, replay number four happens, I think, closer to the 30 minute mark. And double lift. Uh, talk me through how this starts out. Yeah, the fact that they're willing to even pick this fight against a split pushing TF and when Orianna's so far back is ridiculous. And just look at the coordinates. You can roll the replay right now, and you can just see Uzi's looking for a pick on Go going. Uh, roll the replay. Hello. It's coming, boy. It's coming. Don't worry. Uh, Zero's, Zero's tornado here is so funny. Uh, not this one, but the next one that's going to come up. So you see Insect come across. This is just a lack of vision control by OMG. Why is boy, why is there absolutely no vision on what is going on? We, we reset the replay because we record them differently. So it's going to roll this time. You're fine. All right, we're good. Yeah. Um, you can see how hard it, I guess you already said stuff. You can see how hard it is to play against Fiddlesticks. Yeah, it is. Right? Because you have no vision now. They, had, they actually moved their fight. So now Fiddlesticks has no wards on them. Yeah, but I, I just don't understand why they're hugging this side. They know that they have no vision on this side. Gogoing will get popped instantly. Watch this tornado that's actually going to come in a couple seconds. So Gogoing dies instantly. Watch Loveling. Why didn't he jump quicker? And at this point, it's a max uh, max charge tornado that hits him, so he can't jump. He jump. He dies mid-jump. 
and then Sand gets flash borked here by Uzi. Just ridiculous. The fact that Insect even lives this is it's ridiculous. And it just shows you how much of a man Uzi is. Even if he's only 17, instead of flashing out of that tower backwards, it's like that. There's only one way but forward, and he just gets another kill there. So Sohan Royal Club got the inhibitor, they back away. Monte Cristo, this turns badly for them in a moment or two. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, they're going to try and get onto this Baron right here, and it's the teleport that's going to come in from Italy that's actually going to seal the deal right here, so they get some nice zoning. And this is the second objective, the Starhorn. We just saw that dra dragon fight. Now the poke is coming in from the sides on this Baron as well, as they're getting shredded by the Baron. And so it's actually pretty easy at this point for them to clean up. Sure, they'll go and get hit by the Shockwave, but just too much AP AoE going in on that one. Yeah, and it just goes to show you when you play against Fiddlesticks, and this is what we talked about in the last race as well, teams that can play around and not play around champions, if you can engage onto a Fiddlesticks, it's very easy to win. Obviously, Crowstorm is down, but that's why you try to engage specifically onto a Fiddle, because you can stop that Crowstorm, you can react to it. Whereas when you let a Fiddlesticks team dictate the fights, as you saw in the mid lane tower dive, uh, it's very easy for Fiddle to make plays. And I just want to point out that Korn just died there without doing anything. He got sold by Nidalee because he flashed away from his team. You always want to dive within your team so that your team can quickly kill that Nidalee because he jumped in to kill him. So, Krepo, we do have to move along. I think it was a very exciting game. Summarize what happened after that dragon fight in the last sessions because you did mention the strategic misplays from both squads. Oh, yeah. All right, so what happens every time is the team does a good play pushes their advantage, gets an objective, stays around too long, the other team magically somehow, by some strike of luck, cleans them up. That team, in turn, will get an objective and another one, and then overextend again, and then, yeah, somehow the Nexus falls. I am very worried about OMG, because yep. in my mind, this is the second game that they've misplayed their strategy. They tried for that Baron when they had a poke comp. They could have just Siege Towers. This game, what really bothered me was the fact that we didn't see second item Lich Bane on Twisted Fate. We didn't see second item Lich Bane on this Nidalee. You want to 1-3-1. You go second item Zonia's on this TF, and you are committing to team fighting. It was a long time before you got to use the Zonia's active. I just want to see them take down turrets. You don't want to 5v5 the Wombo comp. Yeah, and I love the 1 3 1, but every time they had that 1 3 1 in motion, all ins pushed, they was like, okay, we got a lot of gold, let's base. There were so many Baron opportunities they could take off the back of that 1 3 1 push with vision control, and they just didn't do it. And well, you could just TF ult right to the Baron pit from bottom well, lane anyway. Could have, but unfortunately did not. Real Club pick up the win. So we do need to roll this one on and see what you guys have been saying on Twitter. Earlier in the show, we asked you which player matchup could be the deciding factor in this series and why. Here's what you guys have had to say from at Jet the Future. Yuri, he tweets, she tweets, this person tweets, this series will be defined by Go Going and Cola. Both of these top laners will need to be the rock their team needs. And that was a great Nidalee performance, I believe the first time from Go Going. Uh, next one, at Fire and Ice writes, I'm looking forward to Uzi versus San because Uzi will have to hard carry this series with San trying to stem that. I think it kind of worked out. Uzi did a good job in the previous matchup. But finally, I think from at Kuhn52, definitely Insect versus Loveling. Insect's pressure on lanes is great, but I'm curious how he will deal with Loveling's counter jungling. I think he's uh, doing okay for the time. He bounced back well. Has bounced back indeed. Thank you guys for your answers. We can keep the World Championship conversation going by sending your tweets to us at LOL Esports using that hashtag Worlds, and hopefully we'll read your tweet next time on air. We're going to take a brief, brief break in the action, and then this heated rivalry will move into game four. When we return, guys, don't miss it. by Cola, but he's not got the damage. Shockwave brings the pull. There's the dash from Lovelace. It's an ultra finish stop. They are willing to call blood. And here goes Insect. There ain't no party like the Royals. The party is the dive in the top of them. Insect will use the Zonjas. And that right there is two men down. The hook on Insect doesn't get followed through and clouds in trouble. 